in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Great are you, Lord. Great. While seated, just lift your hands and worship Him. Great are you, Lord. Strong and mighty in our midst. Great are you, Lord. Great Sing it one more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Shika ba banana banana na bo. Hallelujah. We're going to pray tonight, so um, I'd like you to prepare your heart. Let me invite all those who are leaving from tomorrow for NYSC. Please come out quickly. Come and receive grace. Celebrate them and fresh grace. We're proud of you. We're proud of what God is doing. Celebrate them, Koinonia. This is the work of God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 6. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Verse 8, and this is the call that God is giving every one of you. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Hallelujah. He said, Here am I, send me. Father, in the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands upon your people. You have kept them. And David said, The God who gave the bear, the God who gave the lion, he will also give this uncircumcised Philistine. There is a hand that lifted you, it will uphold you till the end. 
and you will not be afraid this is a prophetic word to you the lord is your light and he's the light of your life you should not be afraid the hand that guided you will uphold you till the end you will not be afraid for the grace that brought you through will uphold you till the end and you will not be afraid There is a voice that speaks for you. It will uphold you till the end. You will not be afraid. There is a seal that separates you. It will uphold you till the end. be afraid and you will go from faith to faith from glory to glory I prophesy to you and you will go from faith to faith from glory to glory and you forever be chasing after him you be chasing after him all the days of your life you forever be chasing after him be chasing after him when it was time for David to face Goliath Saul was so intimidated by the size of David he said I have extra weapons to give you and David said no I was not taught with these weapons it was not the javelin and all of this there, there, there was a secret arsenal let me tell you brothers and sisters that which you have been given is enough to make you great Men will offer you all kinds of options. Anything that was not part of the tool for your training is not qualified to be with you in the day of battle. We want to pray. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Many have come and failed woefully. But there is a hand that can take a man and sustain him. And Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all and Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth the prophet said I have been instructed to bless and this I have done and it cannot be reversed in the name that is above all names may you be distinguished everywhere you go May there be an anointing upon your life that separates you out of the crowd. Because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Let God, even your God, may he anoint you with an oil of gladness that makes you always above your fellows. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will receive the help of God. Where your strength fails, may the anointing upon you speak for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. I send a prophetic word ahead of you that everything that wants to take you for a prey, let there be a prophecy that says restore. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
The Bible says, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. I declare that as a result of the blessing of the Lord upon you, you become incorruptible. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who art thou mounting before Zerubbabel? He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. I decree and I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will do much for the kingdom. You will do much for the kingdom. Where there is no voice to speak for you, may you hear a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, and may it command the world to hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. The Bible says, See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. I pray that every territory you enter, those powers in those territories remain subject to you forever. Because the Bible says, let every soul be subject to higher powers. And I speak over your life in the name that is above all names. Every devil of darkness submits to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, you shall not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence. And that which wasted at noonday. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side. And 10,000 by your right side. But none shall harm you. With your eyes shall you watch. And behold the reward of the wicked. I declare that you are preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For his name is unto you a strong tower. And you will run and find refuge. In the name of Jesus I declare. May you suck honey out of the rock. And may your feet. Be honored and adorned with butter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for you let your hand be strengthened by the Lord most high may the Lord amplify your efforts he told Abraham lift up your eyes and see he said for as far as your eyes can see I have given it unto you I declare although you will go to a foreign land I speak to the earth of that territory to bring out his good and give to you said i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places isaiah 48 says that i am the lord that teacheth thy hands to profit i command that these hands will profit in the name of jesus christ just like daniel through the dispensation of three kings he was exalted may you be exalted in the mighty name of jesus christ i activate Breakthrough in your life through the ministry of destiny help us. Whoever needs to hold your hands to go to the next level, may my God bring them into your life. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Whoever needs to send for you, I prophesy in the name that is above all names. I activate the ministry of the wine pressers and the bakers. May they recommend you in high places. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Where your qualification cannot take you, like Mephibosheth, may you still sit and dine with kings. The Bible says, Gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. It said, your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. The Bible says, where you have been deserted so that no man goes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I declare, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not backslide, you will not lose this that you have. For the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. He said, even in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. You will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. When others are waiting for rainy season, you are planted by a permanent source of supply. And the Bible says, as a result, you will yield its fruit in season, and its leaf will not wither. Whatever he doeth prospers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the mark of God be upon you, that everyone that sees you will know that God is with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I strengthen your hands. May God trust you with wealth. 
May God trust you with grace. May God trust you with leadership. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we cause death over your life. That which terminates the life of people prematurely. You are separated from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you. Let the favor and the grace upon this house go with you. Any door that has opened for this house, may it open for you. In the name of Jesus. When God blesses us here, may he bless you wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and do mighty things for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. God bless you. Please, Koinonia, celebrate them. Go and do great things for the kingdom. And let us hear of the exploits you are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Sing it one more time. Yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. 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 First Corinthians chapter 15. Tonight is a powerful time. The spirit. First Corinthians chapter 15. Bible says that which I speak to you I declare to you in the secret place he said declare thou upon the mountain top 1st Corinthians 15 from verse 54 1st Corinthians 15 verse 54 everyone look up let's just read so when this corruptible shall have put on him corruption, and this mortal shall put up immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55. Can we read it together? One to read. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Tonight we are challenging the spirit of death. I will share with you what the Lord revealed to me. We are going to pray. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. It is a tragedy for a believer not to be able to read the signs of the world and see what is happening. If we lack the perception, the ability to align with what the Spirit is doing, we can cut short our lives without knowing Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. O oh, death, where is your sting? No grave, where is your victory? Tonight I'm teaching very briefly on victory over the spirit of death. And then we're going to pray. We have quite some prayers to do. I don't, we're not going to stay long, but we're going to pray. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of of Jesus to break every chain, 
Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, open my eyes tonight. Open my eyes. Open our eyes, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the responsibilities of a true apostolic ministry is not just to change people but to be able to bring territories under the obedience of the Lordship of Christ. Are you getting my point now? A true apostolic ministry has a mandate to become a voice not just to people but to speak over territories and enforce obedience to the word of God, to the ways of the Spirit. Let me show you something. Isaiah 42. This is what happens when any territory lacks a true apostolic voice. And I'm not just talking about people who call apostles, this apostle, that no. I'm talking of certain people that truly have been elected by grace. When a territory lacks true apostolic voices that can be able to speak and command things to comply. 42 verse 22. Let's read 21 and 22. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of themselves snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are taken for a prey and none delivered them. For a spoil and there is no voice that proclaims restore. It says these people are captured. They are taken for a prey. And for as long as there is no voice that can challenge darkness and say restore, those people will remain in captivity. Tonight we have come to pray. We have come to speak and say restore. It says they are taken for a prey and there is none that is able to deliver them. They are taken for a spoil. You know what a spoil is? The proceeds of war. The seal of victory in a war. That every time you spoil a territory, you take the kings and their gold and their treasure. You take it back. You cut the head of the king and hang it and take it as a symbol of your victory. They are called spoils of war. And the Bible says when there are no apostolic voices in territories, when men are kept in prison houses, when they are taken for a prey, there is none that cries deliverance unto them. It says, and when they are taken for a spoil, there is none that says, restore. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. 
break every chain. Listen. Before we talk about death, let me challenge you a little. Hold on. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The word of God can be trusted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not believe the word of God, you are absolutely disadvantaged in this system. Many of us want to trust the word of God, but we keep asking ourselves, what is the guarantee that this word will not fail me? Because we are used to men failing us. We are used to systems failing us. And as a result of that, it becomes difficult. Especially in the face of all of the things that happen. There's death everywhere. Unrest, insurgency and violence. Sicknesses and pestilence and all of these things. But Solomon said there is nothing that is new under the sun. Meaning it has happened before. Recession has happened before. Are you getting my point? War and crime and killing and wickedness. The reign of evil has happened before. Everything that happens now has happened before. And the Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Let me just use a few minutes to help us and strengthen our assurance about the immutability of the word of God. Can we look at that just for a few minutes? You need to trust God's word. This is the sure foundation for faith. Not just faith that has to do with just talking, talking. No, 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 no. no. Authentic Bible faith that is able to produce results. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We'll just rush. I'm talking about death, but as I began to prepare for this, God put it in my heart again and again. That many people are beginning to have a second thought about the word of God. Especially in light of the fact that certain ills and evil seems to be prevailing unhindered. Hallelujah. And so many people are beginning to ask themselves, is the word of God really reliable? Can it really bail me in death? Can it bail me under wicked conditions? I hear the chains falling. First Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We have to be very fast. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we received what? The word of God which he had of us. We received it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you, not that as you, that believe. We received it not, although it was taught by a man, it was taught by a minister, but we received it not just as a word of a man, we received it in truth, that this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that the word of God is able to deliver, to save, to bless? Let's talk about this word of God for a few minutes. Psalm 33 verse 6. I wrote down a few scriptures to just encourage us. Can we really trust in the word of God? Can I stake my life on the word of God? How far can I go with the word of God? Can it stop me from dying? Can it stop me from pestilence and wickedness? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. It says the heavens were created. They were framed out of the word of God. The Bible declares in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. That everything we see in the universe came from God. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Right? And the word was God. It said it was with God in the beginning. Verse 2. And 
The same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3 now. It says, and how many things? How many things? All things were made by him. That word. And without him was not anything made. That means without it, nothing can be made in your life. Without the word, all things were made by the word of God. Hebrews 11 verse 3, don't turn there. It says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but by faith we were told by the Holy Ghost. That the walls were framed by the word of God. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear. In other words, these material things, the unit of them is the word of God. Not just atoms and molecules. Everything in the universe was framed by the word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 3, one of my most powerful scriptures about the word of God. The Bible says he upholds all things. Hebrews what? Am I right? Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of the person and upholding all things by what? By the word of his power. Watch this. It's one thing to manufacture this, but it's another thing to keep it standing. The Bible says the word of God did not just bring it into existence. The word of God is the factor that keeps it moving. He upholds everything. Everything. The sun, the moon, balancing the equilibrium of nature is all balanced by the word of his power. So he upholds your life not by circumstances that happen but by the word of his power. The Bible says all things. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Psalm 89 verse 34. Very powerful scripture. Psalm 89 verse 34. Is the word of God reliable? What is the guarantee behind the word of God? Everyone read. One to read. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is God speaking. He said, my covenant, I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Oh, hallelujah. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. My covenant will I not break. Men can do all of this, but I have, I have entered a covenant with myself because there is no man greater than me. So I enter the covenant with myself and I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone forth. God will not break his word, brothers and sisters. You must be assured of this. It is the guarantee that helps us to trust the word. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. Powerful scripture. Very, very, very powerful scripture. Numbers 23. Everyone read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? He said, God is not a man. That means it's okay when men tell lies. It's part of their predicament. But God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should change his mind over what he has spoken concerning your life. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. The last scripture. I just want to encourage us tonight. Because you see, sometimes many of us really think and we can be tempted to think that believers are just faking these things. It really doesn't work. It's just that people are trying and let's see how far it goes. Hebrews 6 from verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of strife. Next verse. 
wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto who? Us, according to Galatians 2.29. 3.29, it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye what? Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he said, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Next verse. That by two immutable things, which it was impossible. Do you know what impossible means? Impossible means if by mistake God calls this guy a woman, he must change to a woman because God cannot lie. It's not that he does not. Even if he speaks by mistake. That was why when Balaam, listen, listen. When the prophet was called to go and curse Israel, he said, I have been commanded to bless. I have already spoken it. I cannot take it back again. When Esau came and said, is there no blessing left? Isaac said, it's too late. Something has left me because I was representing God. What is it about? Can you not just say, okay, son, I bless you. What was he talking about? He said, everything that is there, I have given it. So where is the blessing? Is it, a, is it just that he died on his son? That another person comes to say, please bless me. He said, it's too late. He was not just talking of, I bless you, I bless you. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He will give up on you. He's able. Listen, let me tell you something about God. Every time God wants to speak, the first thing He examines is His ability. Whether he can do it or not. God will never say anything he cannot do. It's only men that talk. Can say I'll build you a house. Tomorrow in the afternoon come and collect the key of the house. That's a man talking. But when God speaks. That's why when the prophet said by this time tomorrow. He was speaking as an oracle. And the one who the king leaned on said are you kidding? Because he thought God was a man. And he said really you will see it but you will never eat of it. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us. If we think God is playing pranks with us and God is joking, have you read in this Bible that hailstones came from heaven? Have you read from this Bible that lepers, four lepers were running and they had the sound. It was a multiplied effect. Have you heard that people entered fire and it did not destroy them? Question. It's not just yes. Do you believe? Because the Bible says Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I'm about to teach on something very powerful. Very briefly and then we'll pray. But it's going to be a waste if you think God is playing games with you. I know that God is too serious. To allow Jesus Christ die on the cross? Is that a joke? The Bible says, He that did not spare his only son, but offered him freely, shall he not with him give us what? All things, not some things. Say, I believe the word of God. See, this is the, this is the true foundation of faith that lasts. Not this emotionalism that people are doing in the body of Christ. This is the foundation of true faith. Hallelujah. I had a vision in the course of the week. And I saw the map of Africa. And all of a sudden, I saw like a serpent. And it was moving across it. And the Lord told me, I had that, this scripture. They are taken for a prey and none say it restore. Hallelujah. When God shows me things like this, it's because He wants us to act. Hallelujah. And then the Lord began to tell me how that death looms across the continent of Africa and even in the nation of Nigeria. It, uh, listen, 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 listen. There is death. There is the event of death that the Bible calls sleeping. Is that true? 
we just call it sleeping. That's not what I'm talking about. Because according to scripture, those who sleep, those who die in Christ, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die. He was not talking about oppression of the spirit of death. Well, that's why I, did, I didn't write victory over death. Because I want you to understand what I'm sharing. Victory over the spirit of death. Say amen. Immediately I saw this. I said, ah. It's because of something very, very prophetic that God is doing in our nation. I've been announcing this all through different meetings and different conferences. And if this death is not stayed, there will be many casualties. But tonight, my goal is to demystify this thing called death. Because I tell you, when the Lord, in this vision that the Lord was showing me, I could feel fear. Believers have been captured by the spirit of fear. Pastors, leaders, apostles, prophets. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restored. Hallelujah. Said these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, against Jerusalem, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent carpenters. Hallelujah. Is someone getting what I'm saying now? The spirit of death. He said, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? The first thing I want you to know about the spirit of death is that it is a spirit. It is a demon spirit. Please, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone confuse you. Look up, please. Look up. Many of us here have lost loved ones. Some of them have actually gone resting. It was their due season. It was their time. But can I tell you something? There are many people whose exit out of this earth realm is as a result of being victims of the claws and the pangs of death. And we must, we must contend and refuse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. When the Lord showed me this vision, I was very, very touched. And I knew that God wanted us to begin to speak and to open the body of Christ to the revelation that will sustain them in power. And now, I'm not one person who likes talking and announcing miracles and all of that. I like the things to happen and let the people just hear by themselves. But something happened very striking in the course of the week. A lady was in ICU. We hope that when she's done, she will come to testify. Hallelujah. And the lady was under some heavy gadgets and all of that. And then eventually she gave up the ghost. When she died, they were calling me, calling me and said, this lady had died. Everything was over. It was packed up. And then I told the lady that was talking to me, listen please. I told her, I said, put the phone in the dead lady's ears. Just make contact with her ears. And she put the phone and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I bring back her spirit to her body. Nothing happened right away. We off the phone. Brothers and sisters, this is verified. It happened in Asokoro just a few days ago. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, from nowhere, this girl sneezed back to life and started, when she sneezed, listen, 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 that's not even the testimony. When she sneezed back to life, after some hours, she started shouting my name in the hospital. And she was shouting and she asked them to, she said, why did you stop me? This was her testimony, listen. She said, when she was going to the gate, she just found herself in a place. Of course, for those of you who have read Divine Revelation books, you know. And she saw several people coming from the earth realm. And it was her time and she was going, approaching and someone was, it's like people were going to the gates, you know, the pearly gates that the Bible talks about. And while she was there, she could hear from the earth that they are praying. It's like people were praying, different people. And then she said, the moment she was there, the next thing she had a loud shout and it was my voice. I was called, it was like a magnetic force. It was pulling her back and she was saying, no, I don't want to go back. 
and then the angel she would enter the gate and the angel said can you not hear that he's calling you we cannot allow you come listen this is true she's going to come here and testify that can you not hear and then he told her that it's not your time return back and truly when she spoke it was the exact time that i was praying for her hallelujah this girl listen that's not even the testimony she she came back to life with such a dramatic presence she was blasting in tongues when the nurse and the doctors came the power of god came upon the nurse instantly right there listen the doctor was so intimidated he left and the nurse was there the, the lady who was talking with her called and said i want to give my life to christ this lady was speaking utterly mysteries because she came back with an experience i mean her bed was vibrating she was vibrating i sent the text with a few of the leaders this is how you know that i for me it was a confirmation the the goal is not okay dead raised and all of that thank god for all of those things but for me it was a confirmation and then guess what happened the lady said one of the doctors came and looked at her and he said be careful and then when she was sleeping in the night one of the doctors came to her in the spirit to kill her in the hospital are you getting my point now and then she began to pray and then in the morning he came and confronted them for her and said listen you have not seen anything yet the lady that put her ears huh, that put the phone in the ear of the dead girl was just going to get brief bridges and return and a car from their back just smashed that girl and i heard she died in the afternoon can you imagine are you seeing that evil is real for standing to make sure somebody did not die our hospitals have now become occultic places Nasa haluna akan keken no ma basan ko ma Nasa haluna akan keken no ma basan ko In my life, death has tried me many times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? From birth, the devil wanted to take my life. I didn't have the privilege of enjoying breast milk to start with. Let's even start from that one. Praise God. I've been diagnosed of all sorts of things. And I've seen the hand of God. Are you getting my point? I have met with armed robbers on the way. Car has jammed me once. So don't think I'm just talking rubbish. Death is a spirit. Tonight, we will rest this issue of death once and for all. Rome, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. What is this mysterious phenomenon called death that can scare any man, scares the rich, scares the poor? Accidents, infirmities, incurable diseases, acts of wickedness and terrorism, all kinds of things that just brutally exit people out of this earth is there a way out revelations verse 8 verse 7 let's start from verse 7 verse 7 please read and when he had opened the fourth seal this were the the riders upon the four horse are you getting my point I heard the voice of the first beat and he said what? Come and see. Next verse please. 
And I looked and I behold and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was what? So this mysterious spirit that has been responsible for the premature exiting of people is not just a phenomenon. The Bible tells us that he's a real spirit. He sits upon a horse and he does not walk alone. Hell followed him. I told you hell is a spirit. Are you seeing it there in your Bible? <laughs> hmm. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. So how does death manifest? It kills with what? Are you seeing now? Sword is the manifestation of that spirit. And he uses a word again. Hunger. It is still the same spirit. And number three, what you now call death. He named the event after himself. And then the fourth part he said, and with the beasts. You know who the beasts are in the earth? It's not just talking of wild animals. This is the terrorism and all of these things we call. He said, and with the beasts of the earth. They are all the manifestation of how this spirit operates. Are you getting my point now? Remember, Paul was saying he was confronted by beasts and wild animals. Right? He, didn't, he said, although he was not just talking of literal animals. He meant these, those who were opposing the cause of Christ. And so he said, this is how this spirit, he sits upon a horse and sends all of these things as envoys. Hunger. The sword. Manifestations of beasts. And everything. But the Bible says he sat upon a pale horse. And his name is what? Death. You must understand that death is a spirit. Brothers and sisters. Accidents. Incurable diseases. All of these devilish dangerous things. As common as they look. They are the vehicles. Through which this spirit operates. Please get this. I know that many of us, some of us have buried our loved ones. Some of us have been victims of all of these things. Don't worry. Just listen to the word of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please understand that nothing just happens in this realm. If you can believe this, this is your first deliverance tonight. Nothing. A car does not just jam people, brothers and sisters. At every given point in a man's life, he's been influenced by a spirit. There is nothing like neutral. Please hear me. You are either under the influence of the spirit of God or some influence of demon spirits. Is someone getting what I'm saying? When a man says he's an atheist, for instance, that in itself is a manifestation of the spirit of deception. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shouted, nothing just happens. Say it again, nothing just happens. Jesus was giving us an interesting parable. And he said, while men slept, right? While men slept, he said something happened. An enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and left. So that you lie down to sleep, fine and sound. And then by morning you wake up with a lump. Question, in how many hours did the lump just get up? What sponsored it that it grew more than the normal growth of the body? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now the Ebola virus and all those devilish things. Manufactured and fabricated from hell. Right? This is not the first time that devilish virus is coming to the earth. It had come during John Lake's time. And John Lake stamped it to his feet and it went back. And he says, let's try again. After many years. And let's see whether there are still ambassadors. I tell you the truth, there are still ambassadors. John Lake, that was the plague that was killing people. 
And John Lett said, what, what in the world is this? Let's go to the microscope. And he ended that issue once and for all. The earth is becoming more interesting. Are you getting my point? The earth is becoming more interesting because there is, there is an open confrontation of darkness. The Bible says, kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. But it is they that know their God. They shall be strong. Not they that have heard about him. Not they that preach him. They that have paid the price to know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So death is a spirit. Very quickly, is there a way out of the grip of this devil and this spirit? That's what tries to come to take many people's life in the night. Many people. Have you wondered, excuse me, have you wondered why people die in the night? Have you wondered why women make lose children in the night? Why not in the day? The mystery of the night. Hallelujah. And I tell you, there is a visitation of the spirit of death over the nation of Nigeria. I know it. I have seen it. It's looming across territories. Mysterious accidents. Mysterious rage and violence. The Bible says they are taken for a prey. And there is no voice. We are busy trying to raise money in our churches. We are trying to buy suits. The devil has distracted us men of God. We are trying to buy new cars. And the devil tells the demons keep distracting them. While death keeps wiping people. And for as long as it has not touched us, this is the same spirit that manifested in the days of Esther. Esther was enjoying in the palace. She did not know that God took her to the palace so that she will be a voice that will cry restore. She was the apostolic voice in that dispensation. And the Bible says, when Mordecai, who was a watchman, sitting by the gates, he said, I will stand upon my watch. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. There are no watchmen again in this country. We have lost the art of sensitivity. We have lost it to food. We have eaten the food of idols and the king's meat. A little sleep, the Bible says. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands and poverty comes upon you like an armed bandit. This is what has happened to the church. We have been stripped and robbed. And we have been distracted because of the bounty. I believe in prosperity. But not at the expense of that which the Spirit of God is doing. For as long as we are in our various churches and cathedrals. And we feel we are secured. And there are, there are many men of God who do not believe in the Bible. It's just that they have a lot of security. And they don't go around anyhow. Right? But there are so many people who are dying. Who have stood face to face. And they applied the messages that we preach. And it didn't work. And they died. And we keep saying, don't worry. Who is deceiving who? There's got to be something authentic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why will I not talk of faith and courage when there are all kinds of bodyguards following and all kinds of security people and your car is a bulletproof car? Who will not have faith under that circumstance? And your flight is a private one and everything. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. God will judge any man of God and any pastor who does not commit himself to teach believers truth, right? And to stand in the place of intercession and prayer and to shout restore. It's not only about collecting the tithe of God's people and telling them so sit and do this. And then the moment they keep dying like chickens, the Bible says they are taken for a prey and there is no voice to say restore. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Death is a spirit. I like everybody to say, death is a spirit. Say it again, death is a spirit. If you know that death is a spirit, you will know that it's not a mysterious phenomenon that just comes. Listen, 
I travel all the time. I have, I have, I have in my little life. I don't know. Only God will tell. Only when we get to heaven. That I will have the privilege of seeing the amount of poisons I have eaten in my life. One. Two. Only God knows the enchanters that speak spells every day concerning my life. You don't know? You want to be a man of God? You make impact and think the devil will fold his arms to watch. Never forget praying for one lady one time during Koinonia, um, during the counseling. And, and, and the spirit just shouted and said, Joshua, you, you. You know, just warning and all of that. Day and night, brothers and sisters, there are enchantments against the people of God. And so if you do not know where you stand, one outing you can leave and not return again. But let me tell you something. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. But the second Adam has been made not a life-giving spirit. Not a life-possessing spirit. You have so much of that life. It is within your power to dispense it. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. How do you enforce your victory over this spirit of death? Especially in this day and age. Please write it down. There are principles. It doesn't happen by magic. Victory over the spirit of death. Number one, realize that in Christ, if you are born again and you have given your heart to Jesus Christ genuinely, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 1 that we are above. Everybody say, I'm above. I don't know how to make you believe it, but say, I am above. Say it again, I am above. It's a spiritual location. Ephesians 2 verse 1. So realize that you are from above. Hallelujah. It says, and you are sick, quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse 2. Wherein in time past, this and that and that and that, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Okay, let's, let's just run. Look for that part that says we have been exalted above. That's why I'm looking for. Verse what? Six. Six, please. Let's just run down. Let's save time. And he had raised who? Everybody say us. That means not just Christ alone. The Bible says in the curse we identified with him. Is that true? By the mystery of the Holy Communion. Is that true? We entered into him. And so because we partook of the sufferings of Christ, we also partake of the glory that follows. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, when he was raised up, we were raised up together with him. And he has made us to what? Sit in heavenly places. That's an exact spiritual location. Next verse. Ephesians 1. Everybody say, I've been raised up with Christ. And I'm seated with Him. Far above. Say it again, far above. Far above accidents. Far above death. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, say it too. Far above accidents. Far above terrorism. Far above death. Far above wickedness. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe this with all my heart. I'm going to show you a powerful scripture when we're ready to pray. He said, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Ah, uh, is that it? Anyway, let's, let's save time. 21. Oh, yes. Far above what? Principalities. How many of them? And power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, because there are names in other worlds too that help people in this world. So he said, every name, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Say, I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah, I'm far above. Far above every devil. Far above every enchantment. 
every act of witchcraft. Just pray it in one minute. I'm far above. I'm far above. I don't live by the sword. I won't die by the sword. I'm far above. Just pray in one minute and we'll sit down and continue. Mambra take parada balada. No, not a victim of accident. No, not a victim of bomb blast. By the mighty hand of God. Shake it, baba baba. Shake out fear from your life. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth. I'm far above far above in the name of Jesus far above thrones far above covens far above witchcraft the Bible says it I believe it Jesus is Lord of my life this word is true in my life I'm far above I don't doubt it I'm far above I'm far above. Hallelujah. So that's the first revelation you must have. If you must conquer this spirit of death. I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah. Let them cast their spells. Far above. Far above. Make all the enchantments. I will go out and come back safe. I'm far above. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am far above. Man take a Far above. Death is a rider upon a horse. But I am far above. Hallelujah. Number two. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 9. Then we move to 14 and 15. Let me show you something powerful. Brothers and sisters, when a thing is a mystery in your life, it can confuse you. But when you unlock the mysteries, there is no confusion there again. Poverty was once as dangerous as then until men found out that there is an exact formula. And today they teach it with audacity. It's because many people have not studied the concept of death and life and they have not been able to prove to the body of Christ. The same way men fear death, that's how they fear demons. Is that true? That's how they feared poverty until certain people said, let's enter this thing and find out. And they entered and came out. They said, there's nothing there. But we see Jesus. Hebrews 2 verse 9. Who was made a little lower than the angels of the... For what? The suffering of death. This is Jesus paying the price. Crowned with glory and honor. That he by the grace of God should do what? Should do what? Read your Bible. Should do what? Test death for who? Every man. The, this is your Bible. This is, that's why I started by saying, do you believe it? That means, once and for all, Jesus offered himself that the spirit of death will afflict him. Once for every man. It's not talking about sleeping. No. Jesus died a brutal death. That was the spirit of death. But he allowed it once so that no man would be buffeted by this nonsense again. The Bible says it. He tasted it. He tasted it. He tasted the sting of death. Are you getting my point? That was why when he was about to resurrect, those gates of death in, in Psalm 24 said, who is this king of glory that wants to come back? No, when we close the door, you cannot come back again. Except somebody in this realm calls you who wants to call himself back. 
he tasted death. He tasted death. He tasted death. I believe this with all my heart. See, it is the truth you know that will make you free. Not the truth you have heard about. It is not the light that rises that makes you arise. It is the one that comes to you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It has always been there, but it will never work until it comes to you. He said, and the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. Let's look at verse 14. Ah, I love the word of God. Everybody read. For as much as ye are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had what? The power of death, that is the devil. Through death he passed through it, so that he will destroy the power, the devil and his power. Remember in Revelation, he said power was given to that spirit. Verse 15. Everyone read. And deliver them who through the word stop. Not through who through death. Through the fear. There is a terror. There is a spirit. That's why every time wickedness is happening, the spirit of fear always precedes it. To make people afraid. When a Habal is saying three days, you will not leave. He's releasing the spirit of fear. The fear of death. Where all their lifetime subject to what? This is what is going on. You can't go out in the morning because you are afraid. What if this car has an accident? What if the plane crashes? What if the luxurious just what if, what if, what if? Hi. Let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe what I'm sharing with you? You take this word as true and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death brings bondage. Some of you are supposed to have traveled. You can't travel because you are wondering the car Number three, realize that death has been defeated. Revelations 1 verse 18. Revelations 1 verse 18. Please, let's rush. Revelations 1 verse, 7, verse 18. Please just write it and then we'll read it quickly. One to read. This is Jesus speaking. I am he that liveth and was what? Dead. And behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And I have the keys. Is that in your Bible? I have the keys. In other words, it is within my power to control its operation. I have the keys. Please realize this. I'm building up a revelation. So we see that he tasted death and he has the keys. We're going to find out where that key is today. Because he was talking to the churches. Talking to John and then to the church. He said, I have the keys. First Corinthians 15 verse 55. The scripture we saw. How can a spirit terrorize nations? Terrorize people? Oh death! Where is your sting? It likens the way death takes people to the sting of a scorpion. So he said, I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions. Scorpions that sting. He said, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, you have been boasting that any man you take must enter. Where is now your victory? There are people who have defied the power of the grave. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Number four. 
How do you enforce your victory? You must apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Now I'm teaching you how to make it work in your life. Exodus chapter 12, please. Verse 7 and then 12 to 14. Please, let's hurry up. Exodus chapter 12. Moses showed us this revelation. Everyone look up. Now, hold on. Can you see that this is not the first time the spirit of death is passing over regions? Is that true? It has happened many times. And you can exempt yourself and your loved ones first. And then stand to speak over others. You cannot give what you do not have. Is that true? And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two sides of the posts. And on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance. I am the Lord. 13. And the blood shall be unto you. What? A token. A sign. A symbol. A, an indication for when I see the blood I will pass over you and what? the plague the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you what's the name of that virus again? Huh? Ebola virus and the plague the Bible calls it a plague it said it shall not be upon you because it comes to destroy it shall not be upon you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I have prayed for too many people to contact communicable disease if I was faking what I'm telling you. Are you getting my point? It's easy to pray for people in a distance, but when you lay hands on people and you are breathing on people, I do this everywhere I go. I would have caught all kinds of things by now. The last time I went for a medical checkup, the doctor was surprised. See, the Bible says we it says we are not how did he put it? We have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. If you don't believe this thing, it will show in your life one day and it will become obvious that truly you do not know. Hallelujah. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep the feast. What feast? You shall keep this mystery of the application of the blood. It's not an Old Testament concept. To the Lord throughout your generation. He said you shall keep the feast in an ordinance. When? Are you seeing it now? It didn't say it will expire. The mystery of the operation of the blood to bring deliverance. And to secure you. It's a mystery that had been there even before Jesus died. And the Bible says it is an ordinance that you will keep if you are interested in living. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you must plead the blood. And there are three ways to plead the blood. Number one, in prayers. When you pray, you plead that blood. As the price. The blood not only saves, it delivers, it protects. You plead the blood in prayers. Hallelujah. Number two, by the mystery of the communion. The mystery of the communion. The cup, the body, and the cup. He says, for this cause, many of you take it unworthily, and some of you are sick, some of you are weak, and some of you do sleep. Number three, the mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Hallelujah. He said, you shall sprinkle it upon your walls and upon every of these things. Three scriptural ways of engaging the power of the blood to bring us victory. Let's hurry up. The last way or the last way of enforcing your victory is through the authority and power that is conferred in the name of Jesus. I like this one. Goodness. One of my best scriptures, Luke 10, 19, please. 
I'm about to jump up right now. Mm. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Behold, see, conceive it as a reality that I have given you. I give you. The word there is not power like dunamis, it's the word exousia. I give you authority. The authority that comes with my office, I give it to you. To tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over how many? All the powers of the enemy. This is the best part of the verse. And nothing shall by any means, you went to school. Brothers and sisters, what is the meaning of by any means? Whether it is by your mistake, whether it is by your lack of prayer, what by any means... If you stand in this office, I stake my reputation that when it comes to protecting you, nothing shall by any means. There are different means it can come through. Your carelessness, right? Your miss. I, I teach you a secret of spiritual immunity. You will walk through challenges that are killing others by a mystery that you will never be able to understand. He said, nothing, nothing, Nothing. It is on the strength of this scripture. The Bible says, surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall scatter. He said they will come to you in one way and scatter in seven ways. Behold, I give you authority. Exousia. While I was in the earth, there was authority that was given to me. And by reason of that authority, forces bowed. They didn't bow because my name was called Jesus. They bowed because of this authority. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10, it says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him, and giving him a name. What is in a name? It's an office. Jesus is not just the name of a person. The word Lord. See. Listen. He said. God gave him a name. The name is not Jesus. I hope you know. I hope you know. No, the name is not Jesus. We call Jesus because. It was the name of the person that stood in that office. Let's read on verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. Next verse, please. And that every tongue should confess that that Jesus has entered this office called Lord. That's the name. That's the name. Lord, Master, Absolute Controller. And the Bible says whoever. That's why the Bible said the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world's and they. It was the revelation. It was the coronation service that the psalmist saw. So he said the Lord said to my Lord. Sit down at the right hand until I make your enemies. He never mentioned Jesus there. He said the Lord. The absolute control of the universe. Now said to my Lord, who got it by conquest, sit down. And the Bible says, whoever enters this office, some things will start becoming possible. Are you getting my point? In Mark chapter 16, it said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in this office, higher. It said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whoever carries this office becomes a controller. 
becomes a mysterious commander. Listen, if I cannot make it for Koinonia or I, there is a program and they keep a seat here, right? And they say this seat is for um, maybe the president or the pastor somewhere, right? And I call Yinka and I say, Yinka, I cannot make it, but I send you with my name. Are you seeing that? What they are interested in is not the personality. It is the office. The moment he comes, listen. If he can donate 5 million, whether I like it or not, everybody say whoever occupies this office. That's why SSG, the secretary of the federal government will go and represent good luck. And they will say, and the president said. Every presidential car you see presidency. It doesn't mean also rock. That means the collection of the people that are in this office. I hear the chains falling. You will only confront death when you stand in this office. And say, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, that vicious devil that will make a driver lose control and maim and destroy people. Where is your sting? Listen, the patriarchs of old were men of war. They fought war from birth till they died. Yet they were not afraid of the sword. It's not like our own that periodically it comes. They were born and bred in war. David was a man of war. I hear the chains falling. I come in that name. He sent me as an ambassador. Oh, I believe it. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. An ambassador is one who has been sent. 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 Tia Losborn saw so many miracles in his crusade. And when he stands on the crusade ground, he says, do you believe in Jesus? And they say, yes. He says, he sent me. He sent me to this crusade to tell you your sins are forgiven. He sent me to declare, I'm speaking to you, that in that office your sins are forgiven. Now, then, we are what? Ambassadors. Envoys. Representatives. With the full backing of heaven. The full backing. The Bible says, as my father has sent me, the same way he equipped me, the same way he was there for me, that I could call on a legion of angels. Brothers and sisters, this is not about being a man of God. This is your positional advantage. This is really the revelation of what we call new creation realities. Hallelujah. So you realize Death is a spirit. It's not omnipresent. It operates through a network of wicked devils. But it's a spirit. And the revelation that you know translates into light. And when that death sees you because light cannot, darkness cannot stand light. So they shall take up deadly things and it shall not hurt them. They shall pass an environment that has Ebola virus. And rather than destroying them, it will be a blessing for those who are infected because you come in the power. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the Bible says before the, the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will appear again. You know who Elijah was? Elijah is the spirit of the prophetic. It's a true apostolic spirit that will challenge anything that is not God. Hallelujah. It's important what you believe. It's important what you believe. Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. You must kill fear from your life. Brothers and sisters, people do not just die. And you know, hold on. 
if it's just death that many people are afraid of, do you know there is a state that you'll be alive and you'll beg for death? Because of the, the, the way the devil can bastardize your body. The Bible says he kept his bones so that none of them are broken. Have you read that in your Bible? That's what we call shalom. It's a covenant of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Hallelujah. And he said, peace I give you. He was not talking of quietness. He means I give you an ability to be undisturbed. My peace I give unto you. Not, that the, not as the world gives. So you can stand up tall and people are asking you, what is the basis? You are just talking nonsense. Listen, I was in the city of Jos. Five days to 9-11 on the 7th, 7th of September 2001, I think. That was when the first disastrous strike of the enemy. I was in the town. I was in the middle of all of these things. Are you getting my point? In my little life, I have seen a lot of things. When the plane crashed, that was going to happen some years ago. I think last year or two years ago. I was on my way to worry. I could feel that spirit of death. See, it's not that it chooses a particular plane. They are blood testy spirits that just keep hoping something will work. Well, because we had problem landing. And then we landed and we went to worry. I knew something was wrong. On my way back, I, I flew to Kano. While we were in the air, that was when the, the, the plane crash was happening. So many people were calling me and because my phone was switched, they thought that, ah, something happened. Ha! Ah, Paul will go to a city, they will kill him. As soon as they leave, he will get up. <laughs> Mystery man. Yeah, it's in your Bible. Paul died many times. He will just lie down. And while they move, he will just get up. Don't get excited for nothing. Do you believe it? I remember a time when I saw in a vision, I saw my mother's coffin. I knew it was over. I saw people there crying. I saw it. And I got up. Ah, my family. There is a lady here. I'm sure she may be part of the people here. She used to be, when she was an unbeliever, she, used, she had one serious sickness, infirmity. And she was in the hospital. She told me that every time it was around maybe three to four, she would see the spirit of death. It would enter the world. You know how doctors walk around. She didn't know it was death. But this particular man will just enter and walk around to several beds. In the morning you hear crying. They are dead. Oh death, where is your sting? I have met the spirit of death once face to face in my life. Let me tell you that story briefly and then we pray. I was in secondary school and the way we arrange our beds I was close to the door. Listen, I'm being very sincere with you. I didn't know it was the spirit of death. While I was sleeping very cold I saw, you know how these films where they have these people that put on hood like knights, all these kinds of people. That's how it came. I woke up. I was not in a vision. Brothers and sisters, the same way I'm looking at you like this. He was walking around the hostel as though looking for someone. And then while it, everybody was deep asleep, which was mysterious, there was no light. And then while it was about to go out, I was looking at it. It was looking at me. When it was about to turn, I looked at it. Very dark with just bulgy eyes. You cannot see it. Some of you who have watched that film, Lord of the Rings, you know how those, those guys are, those kings. That's how it is. How do you think those people wrote these things? I saw it. Never had a conversation. But today, I know I will meet it many times in many miracle services and in my travels across and I've made up my mind I will stamp it 
every day of my life. You must make that determination because death is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The sting of death is real. If you joke with what I'm telling you, you will be alive in the morning. Ten minutes later, you are out. Take men of courage and audacity. Who is God speaking to tonight? Fear not, brothers and sisters. Not the arrows of terrorism. There is a prophetic destiny. This nation. And the soul of this nation is already with God. Beyond the reach of anything. I shared this thing when I was teaching in, in PFN Crusade in Abuja. That's the reason why Nigeria has the letter Y on the rivers. It's an imprint of the signature of the word Yahweh. That God is in charge. Listen. Upon this nation. Yes. It's not, it has nothing to do with Lord Lugard. That was a writing. Isaiah 18. A land whose rivers divide. God wrote his name there. Listen. You know why he used the waters? Go and read your Bible. Water has always symbolized abundance. And it has always symbolized the echo of God's voice. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Hallelujah. So many things will happen in this nation. Let me tell you. You see the thing happening? The Bible says, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The church needs to pray. And we need to realize that our prayers can withhold evil. Let's not just sit down powerless and hope that nothing will happen. Are you getting my point? And then number two, walk the principles of the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, you can walk fine, you can walk alive, you can move on strong. Refuse to die. It's a choice. Choose life. He said, I set before you. Is that true? Blessing and cursing. I didn't say the other three parts because obedience to parents, you already know that, right? And then your assignment. These are the three other factors that govern longevity. Your choice, choosing life, obey your father and your mother that your days will be long and it will be well with you. And then finally, I shall not die but live to declare. Are you ready to pray now? Rise up on your feet. Let's do some prayer even if it's just for five minutes. Hallelujah. Please spare yourself three, three. We are going to pray. Before we pray for you, we are going to intercede for this country. Three, three. Come on now. Let's pray. I call for that priest in you. Because we are about to pray. Spare yourselves and let's pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shekete Papa. Pray for Zaria. Pray for Kaduna State. That's your Jerusalem. We stay the power of evil and death and terrorism. We command as ambassadors. Shekete Pokotopa. We challenge thrones. We challenge yokes. We challenge spells. Every manifestation of the spirit of death, of the sword, of the wickedness of men, we command those spirits. Rekete koto poko topa, rente leke brosa, embrekete teke te pa 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 pa. We cause the powers in the heavens. We cause the powers. We cause the activities. Of necromancers, the activities of sorcerers, the activities of wizards, make them for Otopataya. He makes the diviners mad. He causes the wisdom of the wise to go backward. We pray in the name of Jesus. We challenge death. Over Zaria, over Kaduna, over the north, over Nigeria, we rebuke you. We are the apostolic voices that cry, restore, restore, restore. You will 
not take the souls of men. We forbid you by the hand of God. We forbid you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We forbid you. We forbid you. We forbid you. We pray for the peace of Daria. We pray for the peace of Kaduna State. We pray for the peace of the North. We pray for the peace of our dear nation, God's own nation, with the signature of His Majesty upon the borders of our nation. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I want you to rebuke the spirit of death. You now know it's a spirit. Cast it away from our environment. Cast it away from your family. It will not come upon the head of any of your loved ones. Go ahead and speak. I cast death over this territory, over my family. My loved ones are covered. There is a shield. There is a shield that rider upon a pale horse will never find entrance. Not by accident. Not by sickness. Not by pestilence. Not by plague. I break the power of death. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I'd like you to plead the blood of Jesus across the territories like the lintel of the houses and upon your life and your family. Go ahead and plead the blood. We invoke the power of the blood. We invoke the mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. Pray, Koinonia. Over Zaria. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over Kaduna State. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over Nigeria. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over our families, we command the blood. The power of the blood. We are sealed with the blood. Unto protection. Unto perseverance. Unto preservation. Unto health. Unto wellness. Pray. He said, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth from my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. It says, I give you power. I give you authority. Hallelujah. I give you authority. Exousia. I bring you into an office. 
and I give you the backing of that office. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And in the name of Jesus, you are going to release life everywhere. Everywhere. In your life, go ahead. Stretch your hands across the north, the south, the east, the west. Go ahead and begin to prophesy life. Go ahead. We speak life. We speak life. Life. We prophesy life to the borders of this city. We prophesy life. Life. We come in the authority of the Lord Jesus. Life. Life. In all the 36 states of the Federation, we speak life. 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 We prophesy. We release the spirit of life. We prophesy life. We speak life. 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 In the name of Jesus. We are life giving spirit. We command life. 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 Health. Vitality. Life. Life. Hallelujah. Look up, we are rounding up. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now let me explain to you what you just did. Verse 2. For the law that activates the spirit of life can do something. It can set men free. There is a principle that activates the operation. Are you seeing it now? When it comes to conquering sin and death, there is a spiritual law. It says it's called the law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. For the law. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. You are going to invoke the operation of this law in your life. And say in my life right now the law of life the spirit of life begins to work every dead organ hear the word of the Lord every infirmity the spirit of life the spirit of life the spirit of life Holy Spirit manifest as the spirit of life in my body no cancer, no HIV, no Ebola virus, no infirmity. The spirit of life activated is a law. It needs to be activated. The law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. Immune me, set me free from the oppression that brings sin and death. I choose life. I choose life in my body. I choose life. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 91. Psalm 91. From verse 4. It 
He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Next verse. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day. Next verse. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. Next verse. A thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side. But none shall come near, near you. Say it shall not come near me. Say it, it shall not come near me. Now in the next one minute, with every strength you have, you know all the weapons that this spirit uses. Accident whatever come against them you are far from my dwelling no accident not to my life not to my family not to God's people I cause that spirit pray No death, no accident, not by the sword, not by the arrows of wicked men, not by gunshots of robbers. And wicked men, there is a spiritual immunity at work in my life, at work in my family. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at two scriptures. Matthew 16, 28. Very quickly, we're almost rounding up. But this is very important. For many of us, I tell you the truth. This will give you confidence. Are you ready to read? Want to read? Verily I say unto you, there are some people who are standing here. By whatever spiritual immunity, they will defy the laws of death. And they will be standing tall the Son of Man. John 8 verse 51 We're rounding up. Please believe these things. This is what makes men confident in this kingdom. You must be standing upon something. One to read. is in your Bible. It may be very difficult for many of us. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. There is another technology that can sustain the life of a man. He said, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And the Bible says, if you keep that saying, it can do something to you. It will become for you the same thing as eating of the tree of life sustain you. Hallelujah. The last scripture and then we are done. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Thank you, 
Jesus Christ. We are doers of the word. And God is committed to making this happen. There is no magic about it. Verse, from verse 2. Or 3. Let's save time. Verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Verse 4. Verse 4. He said, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Listen, take seriously what I'm saying. I'm not just speaking nonsense. And blessed shall be the fruit of your ground. Blessed shall be your cattle and the increase of thy king and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Verse 6. This is the verse. Prophesy to yourself. One to read. Listen. That means when you go out, you are expected to return. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are going to pray. This is the last prayer point. The Bible says you are blessed when you come in. That means you go on a journey, we expect you to return. Hallelujah. You are in a flight, we expect you to arrive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what happens. Lift your voice and pray. I am blessed. As I go out, as I come in, I am blessed. Empowered supernaturally. Blessed in my coming in. Blessed in my going out. Blessed in my coming in. Blessed in my going out. Hallelujah. 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 We'll take one more prayer point as I invite those. Listen, as we take this prayer point, if you know that you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can see the seriousness of repentance. Or you have given your life to Jesus Christ, but honestly, you have not made up your mind. We are very serious about this. As we take this last prayer point, please, there's nothing to be ashamed of. This is about your life. You've, give, you've never given your life to Christ or you want to make your ways right with God. I want you to quickly come and stand here. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly come and stand. As we pray, don't wait until we start calling. We are out of time. And we want you to come and stand. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, it's, 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 we are not playing games. I mean business with you. And I surrender everything. Hallelujah. So as we take the last prayer point, please, all the people that belong to this category come it will be my joy. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Don't sit down deceiving yourself. You can see that the, the day and age that we live in, the seriousness, your, your belonging to God is very, very important. It does not just guarantee your eternity, but even here in life. Because all these things we have prayed is, is only for those who are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Only for those who are in the kingdom. Only for those who are in the kingdom. Only for those who are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to pray. We are going to speak over your life. Any area of your life that has experienced death. I don't care what area. I like you to speak. Because this death does not just work just in your body alone. You are going to speak. Call it and say, I release life. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare life. Go ahead. While those who are giving their lives to Christ come out, let's keep praying. Life to your finances. Life to your health. I don't care what the doctors have said. Life to your ministry. Life to your business. Life to your academics. Life to your family. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Remain standing. Please, if there are anyone, if there's anyone joining this gentleman, please come out quickly. Aside from that, let's pray. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. Tonight, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I repent of my sins and I receive the gift of eternal life. I declare that I'm a child of God, washed in the blood of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, come and live in me. Make me an ambassador. Make me a mighty man in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, I salute you all for coming. Please just follow the ushers. Follow the ushers. They'll have your details. God bless you, sir. Thank you for the bold step. Just follow the lady waving her hands. Hallelujah. Let's remain standing, please. If this is your first time worshipping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we want to pray and bless you. Please find your way to the front. Wherever you are, please. If you came with anybody, push them forward. You love them too much to allow them. Hallelujah. Don't wait for anyone. You are the first person. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Mommy, God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Please keep coming. We want to pray for you. We are anointed people. When we pray for you and we bless you and we speak over you, you truly are blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. We honor you for this that you have done. May God bless and increase you in Jesus' name. We are here every Friday building and trusting God to equip us. We speak over your life. Whatever challenge you came here with, in the name that is above all names, it leaves you tonight. Never to return again. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and bless them. You are life-giving spirits. Go ahead and release that life. You are life-giving spirits. It is within your power to release life. Authority has been given to you in Christ. You occupy an office. You are an 